let me remind you that we are live during the second Global Longathon, and during this session, I have the honor to be joined by Professor Asim Belgomi. Uh, professor Belgomi is a professor of pediatric hematology, oncology, and the associate dean for clinical affairs at Aga Khan University Medical College, as well as the chief medical officer at Aga Khan University Hospital in Karachi. Welcome, Professor Belgomi. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me to this. This is really an honor. Um, so, so thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to start off by 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 thanking Anko Daily for having us here, and to welcome all the people who are on um, uh, th this webathon and uh, to 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 the International Childhood Cancer Day. So, this is a major event. This is something that is that requires a lot of highlighting. Um, childhood cancer is a problem worldwide. And a big problem within childhood cancer is that there is a great divide between the quality of care and, the, and therefore the outcomes of children with cancer between the high-income countries and the low- and middle-income countries. Um, and that is the bridge that we want to connect, and that is the bridge that we want to want to cross over, so that all children all over the world have the same kind of access and opportunity for cure um, that children within, in the richest countries do. Um, and this is what we want to highlight here. I live and work in Pakistan, um, and have been involved with with um, cancer care across the whole Middle East region. Uh, the Middle East region, of course, including Pakistan, is a very diverse uh, region, and this, this includes certain countries that are very high income, but also some countries that are low and low middle income countries, where uh, the opportunity for care, um, cancer care to children, um, is limited. Um, there's an estimate that in these low middle income, middle income countries across the globe, um, the, the, the survival of children with cancer is just about 30%, compared to 80% that is expected in high income countries in the Western world. Um, and so one of the big things that we would like to uh, highlight here and work towards is um, the, 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 the improvement in childhood cancer care and the outcome for children with cancer in low and middle income countries. In 2018, the WHO launched the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer in collaboration with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And what the Global Initiative for Childhood Cancer uh, aims for is an improvement in the outcome of the six most common and treatable diseases, uh, cancers in children um, uh, in lower and middle income countries so that their outcome would increase from the estimated 30% right now to 60% at least. And that's a start. That's not the, that's not the goal. 60% um, is still better than the 30% but certainly not up at the 80-85% that is expected for children in high-income countries. So we've got a lot of work to do. And this work is continuing in many countries. Um, I want to give you some examples of what we've been able to do in Pakistan. Um, as you all know, Pakistan is a very large middle -income, a lower middle-income country, um, which... Um, uh, which has a lot of issues. And actually, until 2016, pediatric oncology was not even recognized as a distinct pediatric subspecialty. So the first thing that we were able to do in Pakistan was to establish pediatric oncology as a distinct subspecialty with its own birth certification and giving the opportunity for doctors to actually specialize in pediatric oncology. And that has resulted in, in, a, in a significant improvement. The same thing has happened with nursing, um, uh, although a little slower than with the doctors, but certainly it's happened, where now we have specialized nurses and training programs for oncology nurses. Um, this has also, this of course could not happen without 
governmental involvement, and that has also continued through the GICC and the work with WHO. Um, and that has resulted in multiple more centers for, the, for, for, for childhood cancer care being opened. But a lot of work needs to be done. A lot of work has, um, uh, is being done. Um, and a lot of this is being sponsored by organizations such as the Pakistan Society of Pediatric Oncology or Pediatric Oncology in the Eastern Mediterranean region, POEM, um, and of course, PSYOP. Um, Onco Daily is a great partner for us to, to highlight all of the work that's been happening across the world. Um, one of the big things that um, has led to the success of childhood cancer in um, uh, success of childhood cancer outcomes in high-income countries is the utilization of clinical research. It's through systematic, thoughtful, iterative improvements in care, learning from past experiences, um, systematically improving the, uh, the care that has resulted in the outcomes that we expect from children now. However, clinical, clinical research in lower middle income countries is very poor. Uh, a lot of that is because there is not a lot of education and training and opportunity um, for, for clinicians, both doctors and nurses, to do clinical research. Um, so there is a, 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 some work that's been going on regarding this. Um, uh, research methodology workshops in childhood cancer have been instituted by POEM, uh, in collaboration with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital that has benefited a lot of individuals. And we, we strongly believe that this is resulting in a significant improvement in the quality of research that is coming out of these lower middle income countries. Um, the research also requires funding. And this is where this particular Ankathan comes in. Um, the research funding for lower middle income countries and specifically for lower middle income countries um, and specifically even more for childhood cancer is quite low. Um, and the opportunities to conduct proper research because of a lack of funding um, is a big problem that happens here. Um, what, we, what we would hope is that through the funding that, is, that will be uh, generated through this Al-Kathan, we will be able to better fund childhood cancer research. Already, several institutions, PSYOP, for example, um, uh, uh, provides funding through a competitive research grant uh, for specifically for research capacity improvement uh, in lower middle income countries. And that allows these countries to start to expand their their, their, their research portfolios, to learn more about the children that develop cancer, to understand better their opportunities for improvement, their tolerance of chemotherapy, their genetics, um, and therefore leading to better treatment outcomes for these children. Uh, and, and this is where you all come in, as your contributions to research um, and for, for childhood cancer is really, really, really going to make a big difference. Um, and, and, uh, and this is what is going to improve, uh, significantly improve and consistently improve childhood cancer care across the world, particularly in lower and middle income countries. Um, in Pakistan, through some funding that we have received, the Pakistan Society of Pediatric Oncology has in fact set up a centralized research um, command center and office um, that is able to conduct clinical trials. And currently, there are six clinical trials, multi-institutional national clinical trials that are running across Pakistan. Uh, and these clinical trials then target um, the understanding of childhood cancer and the, uh, the outcomes for children with childhood cancer in Pakistan. Pakistan is a big country. We have a population of 240 million and almost half of those are children. And so these are a hundred, over 100 million children that have a potential for developing childhood cancer. Um, um, and with that, if you just estimate 
you would you would have about 10,000 children developing cancer in Pakistan each year. Um, and if only 30% of these survive, then that means 7,000 children die of cancer every year in Pakistan. Now, if you multiply that across the world, in all the low-middle-income countries, you can understand how many children with cancer are deprived of the opportunity for cure. And it's only through understanding what we are doing and how we should better improve the care of children that will benefit the outcomes and improve the outcomes for these children. Uh, so I would urge you all um, to continue to, to support childhood cancer. Um, if it can be financial, that is fantastic. But if it can, even, even through awareness, talk to your friends, talk to others, tell them about, uh, about childhood cancer. One of the things that I get really surprised with is I frequently get asked, that do children get cancer? Um, and so really people believe that cancer really is an adult disease. Um, and that's not true. Yes, thankfully, the incidence of cancer in children is much lower than in adults. But, the op but, but, but there is cancer in children. And as I've said, about 100 children per million or more will develop cancer annually. Um, and so if a world population, if you talk about the world population, that means there are thousands and thousands of children who develop cancer every year and need the help and support of the whole world population to, to, to help improve their outcomes. There is a lot of work that's being done right now in low and middle income countries, not just in my region, but across the world, in Central and South America, in Southeast Asia, in India, in China, as you just heard from Dr. Fan, um, and from other, uh, and in other countries where a lot of very, very exciting work is happening. But that can only continue if support, financial and um, otherwise, is available from the world, from the world population at large. And so we, would, we, we continue to encourage everyone to, to, to support childhood cancer. Talk to your friends. Talk to others about how uh, cancer occurs in children, how there is a big divide between the potential for outcome and the actual outcome of children in lower and middle income countries. And it's that, that, that gap that we would like to bridge. Um, uh, in, in Pakistan also, the, the outcomes, um, we, we have no idea what the outcomes are because there was no data that was coming through. The Pakistan Society of Pediatric Oncology is now working, as I said, through the, 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 the research center that's been formulated to start collecting data. And to date, we've got data over the last three years on over 3,000 children with cancer. And it is through this data that we will be able to, as we analyze this data and as we, as we start reporting it and learning from it, um, we will be able to understand where we need to uh, focus our energies, where we need to make changes, how we can benefit the children that are coming to us with cancer. Um, the other big thing that comes through is access. Um, we know that across the world, and Pakistan is no different. We know that across the world, there are a lot of children who are just not diagnosed. Or those who get diagnosed but never reach a center where they can get appropriate treatment. And so the access really has to improve. And the access comes first and foremost from knowledge, from the understanding, not just of the general public, but of the, of the healthcare system itself, of doctors and nurses and midwives and uh, other healthcare professionals and understanding how to diagnose cancer and how to and where to transfer them where to refer them to to childhood cancer um, uh, care centers where they can actually get the treatment that they uh, need and deserve um, so with these with this awareness then we would start getting patients who are lost patients who never even reach a cancer care center uh, for their treatment, we will start getting those patients actually coming in and being diagnosed. 
It's only when you get diagnosed that you actually have an opportunity for cure. And that is critical. So first step, it really is for people to uh, be aware and to understand what childhood cancer is and how to diagnose it and then where to refer it. Only when patients are referred to these centers can we then start talking about availability of cancer and other uh, things, uh, other ways of treatment. Um, again, I would like to thank you all for participating in this Ankathan, for listening to all of us, um, and for, for continuing to support childhood cancer care. Um, uh, and, and um, uh, you know, continue with this thing on this international um, Child Cancer Day. We um, would really like uh, to, 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 to wish you all uh, well on this and continue to uh, continue to, 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 to work with you all and continue to have you support us. Thank you, Professor Belgami. Uh, thank you for raising the awareness and highlighting really the problems present in lower and middle income countries when it comes to childhood cancer. After all, more children with cancer are located, especially in these countries, and la they lack access to treatment, access to care. And this is a major problem that needs to be addressed. Thank you very much. And we're happy to collaborate. We're happy to uh, partner with anyone who is devoted uh, to this goal to end pediatric cancer, to end childhood cancer, and find better treatment options. Stay tuned with us for our upcoming sessions during the second Global Oncathon. Uh, we will have a short uh, break between the session and we'll continue.